my god. We have a white liberal alert. All gamers stand by for category 5 cringe. So there's a popular TikTok going around of a pro-gay female ex-clergy giving arguments against traditionalists who believe the holy scriptures condemn homosexuality, aka people who can read. As expected with these types, her personality is absolutely insufferable, and yet her ilk absolutely adore her and her arguments. So, this is my takedown of her claims. I literally want nothing more than for this to be a valid argument, but I'm going to tell you why it's not a valid argument. Hey, liberal. Nice haircut. Did you get it at the liberal store? As a former clergy member, somebody who used to work in the Methodist church, who has a master of divinity, um, I know biblical Hebrew and Koine Greek. I've translated multiple books of the Bible. With respect to your arguments, your credentials don't mean nothing. Like, okay, layman might be able to fall for that, but anyone with a basic grasp of rational argumentation, and might I add a Bachelor of Theology, will be able to see straight through that instantly. So this is a pretty poor start. That is my first advice to viewers watching this video right here. Do not let these apologists for sodomy shove their credentials in your face as if it means anything. Take it from me as my eyewitness testimony. I won't even flash my bachelor at you guys. Just as someone who's viewed tons of papers by people with their PhDs and big funny hats in their head at graduation ceremonies, they have written some of the most, that's a naughty word, ridiculous stuff you will ever see with respect to any issue, theology, philosophy, history, anything. Argument is what you need, not my credentials or my expert. I don't care about that. I care about your arguments. Um, it's not a valid argument because the word homosexuality is literally does not exist in the original text. Nope, in the 1940s, the word homosexuality was invented by biblical scholars translating the RSV translation in order to propagate homophobia. Citation needed. So, it's listed nowhere in scripture, nor does Jesus ever talk about it. Yeah, and Jesus never mentions rape or bestiality either, so when can we expect a TikTok crusade for rapists and zoophile rights? Also, coming back to the alleged lack of the word homosexual in the Bible, again, alleged, Apologists for sodomy absolutely love to trip up laymen on this point, and I can tell you that because I almost fell for it myself once upon a time years ago. They rely on you equivocating in your mind that the lack of a word means the lack of a concept. But this is 100% fallacious. Just because we don't have a single exact word for a certain concept doesn't mean that the Bible, or any text for that matter, doesn't refer to that concept in multiple words. Case in point, with respect to homosexuality and it being a sin, we have Romans 1.26. For this reason, God gave them over to dishonorable passions. For their women exchanged their natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. And likewise, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed in their passions for one another. Men committed shameless acts with men and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. And before anybody's like, oh, well, in Leviticus, it talks about man shall not lie with man. Property, yes. I have the chief comedy. Well, first and foremost, an American publishing company did that. That's not in the original text either. Because if you look at the Martin Luther Bible, the German word that it's used is Knaben, which means boy. Talking about pedophilia. Now, this is her core argument, and oh boy, is she wrong. I know it's been really popular for a long time with the homophiles, but it's... Mm, I can never get used to hearing it from supposedly educated persons because it's not just wrong, but so unambiguously wrong that to believe it, you would have to either be brainwashed or a liar. And here's why. First, notice how she claims after some evil American publisher rendered Leviticus 18.22 as man shall not lie with a man as with a woman, she claims that this is not in the original text. 
But to refute this, she doesn't go to the original text, but to a 16th century German translation by good old Martin Luther. Why? Why aren't you going to the Hebrew text if you're claiming that the original text doesn't say man shall not lie with the man as with a woman? Why are you appealing to a late medieval translation? Well, she claims to know biblical Hebrew, so I think there's a reason why she doesn't want to show you the original text. But, oh, look what I have behind me. This right here is a Hebrew Old Testament. And as you can probably tell, it is an absolute chungus of a book. So, let's take a look at the passage in question and see what the Hebrew says. Now, the main word in question is right here. Zachar. This word was translated by multiple medieval translations, including Martin Luther's, to mean boy. God knows why they did that, but this is, of course, very popular nowadays with the homophile apologists. Uh, but there's a reason why it is not translated that way anymore, and well, hasn't been for a very long time. And in fact, originally was not translated that way in ancient and multiple other medieval translations. And the reason simply is because it doesn't mean boy. It generically means male, just a male. That's it, regardless of age. And if you're one of this woman's fans and you really don't believe me, well, here's a Hebrew lexicon. Here's the word. Go ahead and screen cap that and uh, rethink your support of her content. So, take several seats. No. So, what have we all learned today? First, do not take someone's opinion for granted just because they confidently assert their credentials towards you. Second, hold the feet of heretics to the fire and scrutinize everything they claim. Do not let them abuse God's word in the public discourse. And don't be meek and passive about it. As per the example of the prophets, the apostles, and Christ himself, do it with words that cut to the heart and convict. Thank you all for watching, and I hope my brothers and sisters in the Lord have learned something, and I especially hope that people who bought into arguments like this now think otherwise. Please do give me a like, subscribe, a notification bell, and most importantly, share this video to any peers you think will learn from it. God bless.